Our house was recently selected as one of the winners for the local lottery on an internet outage during a random service issue in the surrounding areas. This actually lasted for a couple of days and is the main aspect that sparked this video. Uh, during this time I realised a couple of things, the first of which is that a lot of my work requires at least a little bit of internet connection just to get online with Git, check for client updates and of course uploading the videos. I also noticed that the Chrome Dinosaur Endless Runner game has either been removed or just disabled on my Chrome installation. Whilst making these discoveries, as a game developer this naturally led me to thinking about the steps to recreating the game inside of the Unreal Engine, and as I've created a flexible Endless Runner system for the Unreal Marketplace, if I wanted to do this I realised that I wouldn't actually need to start completely from scratch. So instead I decided I'd see how simple it could be to use my Endless Runner creator, take some completely random and somewhat themed, loosely themed assets to create the Dinosaur Chrome game inside of Unreal. The first step was going to be setting up a new folder structure and the base classes needed to drive the new game logic. So do note that this isn't a tutorial, this is going to be just the process that I took of using my existing plugin, taking the assets that were in there and reworking this to create a brand new game or a copy of an existing game. The logic that I'd be sharing, these were simply derived from the runner creator game mode and the player game base class. And then for the map I've created, an empty map for now, borrowed some of the generic required assets from the existing Roadrunner map, such as the level manager, floor spawner, and some of the light and sky visualizations just to get the, uh, the visuals at least somewhat started. After spending a very small amount of time getting this working, something really exciting happened. Uh, the internet actually returned for a little while, so I used this time to find and download some level pieces and obstacles that somewhat match the theme of the game. So for the ground I've gone for some stylized stone floor pieces which will kind of easily work in place of the black line from the original Chrome game, and for the obstacles I've found some stylized cactus models. All of these were available for free on Sketchfab. You can find the links and the credits for anything mentioned in this video down in the description below if you wanted to get any of these for yourself. I wanted to take this approach rather than creating my own assets, just so that I'd get a better idea of how people downloading and using the Endless Runner Creator plugin would be experiencing things on their end, as up to this point I've been creating the assets specifically to fit the game types that I've recreated for the plugin. So this just means that things like size and uh, connectivity and like having them all piled together have all been accounted for before I even bring them into the engine and knowing exactly how the logic in the classes is expecting them to perform. With this in mind though and considering that I pick these models completely at random having never worked with them before I seem to have gotten really lucky in how well they were made. The only changes that I needed to make and this is actually for both of them as well they both started I think it's something like 0.001 on all of the, the scales, and I just needed to up this to one, reset the pivot point, and reset the transforms, and that was pretty much it. The assets were then ready to go inside of Unreal. So with this done, I was able to import the models into the engine, create the materials, which again, thanks again to the creators of the models, providing just a great selection of textures. This really allowed me to very quickly and easily create a kind of full PBR material implementation for both of the assets that I was using. And then with some visualization passes in the Unreal Engine, I felt as though rather than having one long kind of floor piece spanning in exactly the same way as the Chrome game. By removing the beginning and the end pieces, this would create a kind of a floating path look and just make it stand out a little bit. And I thought this looked a little bit better in 3D than just one long line. The only thing standing out at this time is that the tiles would probably be looking better if they had a kind of more sand or sandstone style to them because of course the obstacles would all be made up of the cactus model. So to achieve this, I quickly ran the albedo texture through Krita added a colour overlay style to the main layer and gave it a kind of dark yellow tint. Saved this back out, re-imported the texture into Unreal and then boom, the sand tiles were ready to go and looking pretty cool. After a couple of internet drops, this lasted by the way for the best part of two days, quickly took the opportunity when the internet did come back again to jump back online to find a fitting character. After a lot of searching for things from uh, realistic to voxel dinosaurs, I found this little guy in the dino pack on the Unreal Marketplace and immediately knew that this would be the one going into my game. The final thing I remembered being in the list of required assets to kind of accurately recreate the dinosaur game 
with the clouds, which were just in the background, just for that kind of visual noise and interest being added there. So for this, I hopped back over to Sketchfab, found some low poly clouds and downloaded these. And again, this model needed some scaling tweaks, just like the other assets. This one also needed the normals to be fixed, needed to flip these because when I first brought them into the engine, it was pretty much invisible unless you rotated it around at certain angles. With everything now in the project, the next step was to get everything moving. I started with the dinosaur character, which was as simple as taking a copy of the base player animation blueprint, which is already provided in the plugin and switching out the idle, run, and jump animations. The jump animation being swapped out with a montage created from the dino jump animation. This might surprise a few people, but I'm quite a sucker for cute, kind of creatures in this way and this package comes with a ton of really interesting cool and very cutesy sort of animations so it's actually a little bit hard to choose whether to be a bit more serious or go with the funny animations i did go with the straightforward running and jumping but if you check this back out it's got some sort of belly running and belly jumping which is pretty cool with the character done though for the moving level pieces i've taken the blueprint class from the roadrunner example as these already have a very similar setup for the obstacle placements that i'd be needing to include and also an animation which would work with the floating level thing when they enter and leave the play zone which i thought would look again pretty cool with the floating level idea that i've gone for so some small changes to the level piece bounds just to fit things like the different size of the tiles used here and when I wanted them to be counted as out of bounds using the end level collider. These were again ready for use. And ready for use. Then using a slightly custom approach and borrowing from the nested pickup system which is in the plugin, I was able to quickly add some nested obstacles to the floor pieces which just meant that each section would have a random chance to activate a cactus. And this cactus would follow the movement and animation in and out of the play zone with the level piece it was attached to. So we wouldn't see things like a cactus popping up in a random place on a tile that may not have been animated into the level yet. I also took the chance here to add some extra animation to the floor pieces just by lerping the scaling to make it seem as though they were kind of appearing and growing in uh, when they're activated and then shrinking out of existence when they're disabled as well as the floating up and falling down. To complete the character class functionality, I just needed to add some new features for jumping and landing, things like uh, detecting whether the character was on the floor, resetting the jump count and things like that, as it didn't share an exact movement style with the lizard runner template it was based on, but a lot of that logic did prove very, very useful. This brought the game to a mostly functional state. To bring the visuals together, I then borrowed the post process volumes from the lizard runner template again and made the focal point really try to hone in on the character and the level pieces with things like the depth of field. I also added the final visual aspect from the original game just to provide that little bit more visual interest to the scene by placing some background spawners for the low poly cloud models. This again was as simple as taking a background spawner class just like those seen in the lizard runner template which are currently responsible for spawning the pillars in the distance and then from these classes these take all of the global movement values with given offsets to allow them to automatically work with the level movement or the level piece movement and finally after ensuring all of the polished passes such as the sound and the particles all were implemented i felt the game was just a little bit too hard with the character feeling a little bit unresponsive in the jumps due to the height of the jumps and also the slow return to the ground using the default gravity. So after a little bit of tweaking with the jump force to make the jump have a much better arc, I added a kind of fake gravity to the character so that everything felt much more precise and fun to control that way. And that left the final and all important feature that needed to be included. The one that brought this whole project about, uh, that was of course the no internet error message. This took just a few minutes to create, added a new widget class purely for the text visualization. So no functionality was needed to be considered here. And then a call from the player class to create and display the new widget. And that was everything complete and ready to play. These are going to be the final results, which I'm pretty happy with for about an hour's work here. It's been a while since I've done a huge chunk of work on the Endless Runner Creator, so it's nice to see. Uh, of course, I do have some in-depth knowledge, but it's very, very easy to forget the ins and outs of a project when you haven't seen it for like a few weeks or a month. 
So it's nice to see all of these random assets come together very quickly and we're able to make a game pretty much immediately. I really like the way that all of the assets all came together as well, even though they were from completely randomly sourced and made of a mix between free and paid assets. And the process just provided a really interesting look into how people who might be using the plugin could potentially make use of the existing content in the plugin whilst integrating their own assets and their kind of game design goals. So this is running, the desktop build is playing in the background here, there's a mobile build that I got working as well. So all of this was actually looking pretty cool on the mobile phone with the different resolution. And if it wasn't ripping off completely from Google, could potentially make its own little game if extended. So this was just a kind of silly little project, uh, something to do over Christmas when I didn't have any internet for a couple of days. Surprising how much we have kind of come to rely on the internet, especially with all of this working from home and getting things, the sort of work that I do anyway, definitely benefits from almost constant access to the internet. If you haven't seen the plugin and this makes you interested in the plugin, links for that will again be in the description below, as well as all of the assets that I used, downloaded, paid for from the marketplace, uh, or downloaded from Sketchfab will all be in the description below if you wanted to take a look at any of those. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, slightly lighter content than the traditional tutorials that I do on the channel. And of course, if you did, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel to grow and reach as many people as possible. And to be kept up to date with more content like this and the tutorials that I upload weekly, do remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell just to ensure you actually get the updates when those videos go live. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.